Hello and welcome to the Technical Footballer Podcast, dedicated to creating better players with advice for professionals all across the country. Today we're joined by European striker Sadiq Belarabi as he shares his past experiences in Greece, Turkey, Portugal, Spain and England on how to get out of a goal draw. You find a lot of strikers that play well, but maybe don't score too many goals and they kind of can get overlooked by that. Rather than a striker who maybe not be as good a player, but scores more goals, then at the end of it, he's going to get the move and he's going to move on his, in his career. So, yeah, that's just my kind of take on it, really. Do you think there's a, a scenario where a striker doesn't have to score goals and they can still get the praise as if they did? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's circumstantial as well because... Mm. It depends on how well your team is doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we can look at who... Uh, okay, Liverpool, for example. I would say Firmino is not the best goal scorer, but he does a lot for the team. But if Liverpool didn't win the league or weren't doing as well as they did, then you'll be hearing, oh, Liverpool need another striker who can score mm. goals and that. And yeah. just the way it is, really. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the thing, right? Like, okay, it's fine, like someone, you know, sitting a bit deeper lying or playing like a false nine and, you know, mm. trying to help out the team. But the goals need to come from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. All right. Fair enough if you're going to be that that striker that's, you know, you know, trying to help everyone else out. But the goals need to come from somewhere. So Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I was thinking like was- Emil Heskey made a career out of being the assist striker, didn't it? Yeah. So he was going yeah. for years as the guy whose strike partner was going to get a lot of goals. Mm. And that's... Sorry. Oh, yeah. So I, I was going to say, and that's quite interesting because back then, like, everyone used to label him like, oh, yeah, he, he was quite good. Then, obviously, towards the end of his career. Mm, yeah. 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 <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a striker that's not scoring goals, what, what contributions on the pitch do you think you should you should have to be able to bring in uh, with the rest of the team? What do you think? Uh, I think you just, just got to be aware of your position then because um, if you're not scoring the goals, you've got to be doing something else and that might just be creating space to, for others, um, assisting and just being a presence, you know, um, being able to hold up the play to get others involved because you can't do everything but you can't... Um, not do anything at all, if that makes sense. So if you're not scoring, which is obviously the main thing that's going to win games for the team, you have to be doing something else to contribute. So um, I've seen situations in myself even where I've been required to be that hold-up guy, to hold the ball and let someone else get in. Or our positions where I've been required to be that guy running in behind and actually scoring the goals. So I feel like it just kind of depends on um, what role you kind of adopt in the team, you know, um, and based on that, that's how it just kind of changes. Yeah, look at, uh, sorry, one more. I think um, my favourite one in this whole circumstance, because we have a lot of debates about this, when um, Ronaldo was in Madrid, it's a very easy one because Benzema wasn't scoring, but Ronaldo did everything. And you read, oh, this guy gives him the passes. He does this, he moves, creates space, this and that. But the minute um, Ronaldo left, it's like, oh, this guy needs to score. And yeah. to be fair to him, he stepped up. He stepped, he stepped up, up as well. Yeah. Up, yeah. So, it all depends really on the circumstance. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot depends on, not only that, but like the size of the player as well. So, I'm thinking yeah, of someone yeah, like yeah. saying Nikola Zigic, who was like six, seven, six, eight. He could mm. hassle, bully defenders and just be a physical presence. Yeah. Whereas if you go back to a player like, say, Firmino, who doesn't have that stature, his yeah, work yeah. rate is what he's known for. Yeah. Isn't it? And the unselfishness. So, like, I suppose you've got to find your own strength, even if it's not scoring. 100%. Mm. Yeah, who can... You saying about that height thing, we can even go back to Crouch as well. You never yeah. really looked at him, oh, he's going to score you the most goals, but you expected if you put a ball in a box, he's either bringing it down for someone else or getting mm. on the end of it. But you're you're not prizing him, oh, this guy needs to score 100 goals or 40 goals a season. So as, basically, as you just said, depends on the player and your stature and physique as well. It does play a big factor in in the situation as well, 100%. Yeah. 100 goals so, a season. What's that? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was, I was, I was, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a special. Bloody hell. He's got big expectations, isn't he? <laughs>
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, as as we know, guys, um, the topic of today is obviously talking about getting out of a goal drought. Um, and as we've been speaking about there, it's all about perspective on on how long those those things last, depending on your role in the team. Um, so just just going around to everyone, probably starting with S- Sadiq. Um, in your eyes, how long is a, a goal drought? How many games? Uh, it depends on how often you score. If I can start oh, yeah. like that. So if, you're, score, <laughs> if you're if you're for me, if, if you're averaging a goal a game, then two games is a goal drought. Do you know what I mean? If you're averaging a goal every five games, then seven games is a goal drought. Do you know what I mean? So I would I would say for me personally, I think for me about three games would be a goal drought. And especially as a centre forward where they're relying on you to get the goals. So if you're someone who's just regular, regularly scoring, every, you built a good reputation for yourself to score every game or every other game, then a goal drought could be as little as three games, you know? If you've built a reputation of not really being that goal scorer, then you have a bit more leniency <laughs> to take longer before actually people start saying, whoa, wait a minute, this guy hasn't scored. So, yeah, once again, perspective. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Yeah, that's, 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 my, yeah, that's my take on that. <laughs> I think that, that depends as well whether or not your team's winning, right? Like, if it's winning, yeah. it probably yeah. won't go noticed as much. But if, if your team's dropping points and you're struggling, it's like, well, this guy's not bagging in the winners. But could you imagine someone like, say, Messi or Ronaldo going five games without scoring a goal? Everyone would be saying they're finished, they're done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like... That's exactly, that's exactly it, yeah. Because you almost expect them to score every game. So if they're not, if they have two games without a goal, then you're like, this guy, yeah. what's, what's, what's happening? You know, yeah. but, it's, it's finished, mate. It's finished. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you scored three games, two games before that, <laughs> like, scored a hat trick, then two games without one goal, it's like, ah, oh, nah, he hasn't scored. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Curtis, what's your, what's your take on goal drought? How many games? Um, well, in my situation, I've, had, I've been in a goal drought since from about 10 to about 25. So it's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I feel like price tag comes into comes into play as well. Sometimes when you see a player that's been bought for, for 20, 30, 40 million pounds, you know, fans want to see, pundits, pundits will speak about it regularly. They want to see goals from the get-go. And, you know, I mean, they'll feel that added pressure depending on the size of the club as well. You know, you, it's one of the things you, you, you need to be scoring goals or you need to be contributing in some way. So, I don't know. I don't know. As you said, you mentioned Liverpool previously. You've got other players in the team other than Firmino that can chip in with goals. So, you know, his his work rate goes noticed. He goes noticed. His other contributions to the game go noticed. So, it's, it's a tough one. I would say generally three, 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 three games probably, right, Sadiq? Yeah. 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 Wow. I think we said that like, price turns really good as well because if you think yeah. of say like I think of say like when Shevchenko went to Chelsea there was so much expectation on that and I mean I'm pretty sure he scored a, a semi-decent amount of goals if he was a cheap signing but because he was such a high-profile signing he he just looked like a complete failure basically right. and yeah. then the same Precious. as the rest to Chelsea like yeah. so did up at Liverpool went for a big price tag yeah. and then all of a sudden he's seen as a bit of a meme in the end really I yeah. suppose it's happened with a few players. I think Falco at Manchester United, you know, yeah. that, that they've put themselves under their own pressure, really, you know. They've yeah. had good goal records that, you know, I'm saying for whatever circumstance, they haven't been able to hit it off straight away. It, it just automatically looks like they're not, they're not firing. But, yeah. Definitely. Have Definitely. you ever found that today, going into a club and the striker just has sort of like, I don't know, like sort of like a different meaning there? Uh, yeah. What I'm thinking is like, Say, like, the Newcastle number nine, for example, Alan Shearer made that so famous. So now, yeah. any sort of look at the for Newcastle, that number nine shirt is sort of, like, sacred to her. And there's, like, probably yeah. an added pressure. Have you found that going into any particular club? Or? Yeah, uh, 100%, because obviously it depends on um, what's left behind you. So if they you go into a team, they've just won the league and their striker scored X amount of goals and you're coming in as a new guy, of course, there's that much pressure to live up to the expectation expectation and even surpass it so um, I've experienced that once or twice actually especially being when I was a bit younger going into clubs I always like to I'd always like to do my research and see oh 
what history did they have? What did they do the year before? So it's never really been a pressure that has been placed upon me by anyone but myself, really, because um, I always want to know where I'm going, mm-hmm. what I'm replacing. And that could just be as simple as the number on the back of the shirt. And all oh, 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 question, and what and what club in particular made you do that bit where like you thought a bit, oh, there's a there's um some decent number nines in the past there? Uh, so when I went to obviously um when I was twenty two was my first time signing pro. I went to Greece at the time. And I went to a second division club. Um so it was quite a big club. It was quite a new experience for me and everything. So I just said to myself, I need to see like where I'm going, you know, what I'm doing. So I've gone in there as a young player. Um, I want to make a name for myself and start playing games in a team. So I went to look back, oh, who's this striker that played here? Um, it's not necessarily anyone world famous or anything, but I've seen what he's done for the club. So the year before, he scored this amount of goals, 20, 28 goals to help the team now get promoted to that division. So now he's moved on. They need someone else. He's a foreigner as well. So they need another foreigner now. So I expect naturally, well, I'm the new foreigner they've brought in. They're going to expect me to be even better than this guy. So um, that for me, being a young mentally and young minded as well, straight away, the pressure piled on me. And mm. yeah, that was my situation in which I experienced. This such is a- slightly, slightly off topic, but... When you signed for that Greek club, was there like only a particular number of foreigners that they could have in the team? Uh, at the t- yeah. If right, it so. was, then doesn't that add extra pressure on top of, say, like they've only got three spots for foreigners? And one of them uh, exactly, you. yeah. yeah, one, 100%. So at the time, there wasn't um, any kind of cap on it. Now there is uh, that. They're only taking yeah. foreigners in places like that from with a European passport now. Yeah. So um, obviously I would have qualified for that anyway. But the fact yeah. being is that um, at the time it was me and... Um, four other foreigners in the team. Mm. So naturally, it's just the way it is. When you go to a club as a foreigner, they expect you to do extra. Mm. Otherwise, they're not really bringing you in. So once again, as a striker, they expect, okay, you're going to run, you're going to win the balls, you're going to score the goals, especially if the last foreigner they brought was doing that. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is It is quite a pressure. It is quite a pressure that you just got to try to learn to deal with, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's 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 crazy that you talk about that pressure already even before you before you get to the club. Yeah, because you are one of those um, those foreign players, um, a part of their tabs. You know, you have to yeah. that standard. Um, just talking about the intense pressure that you know can be had. You know, with with scoring goals and getting the goals. Can you recall a moment in your career where there was intense pressure on you to score for your club? Oh, yeah. Um, and that even goes back to um, in, in this last one as well. Um, basically, in my career, two, two and a half years ago, um, I signed in Turkey. So I went to play there as well. So what happened was um, for my first club there, I scored um, seven goals in three games. So went on to finish in the season with 14 goals very good season. So my transition from there to my next team, okay, this guy done this, we want the same, you know, we're going to bring him in, we're going to pay a lot more money for him. So then already the pressure was kind of there. Um, and in that team, I managed to score two goals in seven games. So already now, I remember my first friendly game um, pre-season for my new club where um, it was kind of like, oh yeah, we've got... We've got Sadiq, you know, he scored this many goals. He did this, he did that. And I remember it clear as day, you know, um, I did one, we're playing the friendly and I did one run, you know, down the down the line. We had a corner, I just broke on the counter attack. So the minute I broke down, I just sprint out this and that. You can hear the fans really, because they're very crazy fans in Turkey. I don't know if you know about the way yeah. they are over there. They're very, you know, they're like chanting, oh, yes, we're going to win the league. We're going to, did you see that? This is and that, yeah, you know. And it felt good, but it's just kind of like, whoa, 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 we're going to win the league now. Like, <laughs> we haven't won the league for a while, you know, we're going to win it now. So it's kind of like, it's a good feeling, but it just says, what, like, I really need to step up. So obviously, first game has gone by, I didn't score. But in my last team, my first game, I scored. Second game gone by, I didn't score. But the team before that, my second game, I scored a hat-trick. 
So already now in my own mind, I'm feeling wow, like I already feel like things are not really going the way that they're supposed to be going. Uh, third game, got one goal. Fourth game, not again. But at this time, my team is not doing really well as well. So it was even more, you know, okay, Sadiq, you know, go play on the wing, go play striker, go do it. And all I'm thinking is, oh, you know what, just come on. You need to really just get your head down, get focused and get to work. So for me, that was a time where I don't think ever in my career I felt such a big pressure just because of what I did the year before and what I was expected to do the following year and it just wasn't wasn't happening. So that was really tough. That was that was really tough for me. Yeah. Sadiq, how do you generally handle that pressure? Are you someone that thrives off that pressure or do you like to go about your business quietly? What what kind of uh, So um I'm kind of, it just it just kind of depends. I'm a bit of both really. I like to um I like to just be on my own, you know. I've got um I'm a family man as well, so my family helps along with that as well, to be honest. Sometimes it's nice to go home and just kind of get away from it. So what I generally do is I try to take just a moment to think about things properly, you know, what's happening here, why is this happening? But then the minute I get home, I try to really disconnect from football. Um, I feel like if I'm taking them problems with me back home, I'm not really letting it go and it's just going to kind of sit with me. Then all of a sudden, work becomes stress, home becomes stress. So I just feel like it's just about a balance, really. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say I thrived off it, but I just learned how to deal with it. Yeah. So um, yeah, that that was that's that's pretty much how I got through those situations. Mm. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's 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 really interesting because obviously, um, as we know, with these droughts, you know, a lot of it, as you spoke about, there is mental. It's all you know yeah. in, in in the head because. Physically, you haven't changed. Like technically, your football hasn't changed, but it's just yeah. it's you approach the game in and around it and within it, which can be a little bit different. Um, mm. Just talking about those situations, I know Curtis touched upon it a little bit. Um, are there any like little mental solutions that that you used to do um, when on like a small droughts or on intense intense pressure to score? Like, I, I don't know yeah. if you do any self-talking, um, just, like, go to sleep at night and, like, mentally picture that you're scoring goals. What was... Yeah, I'm a... I'm a... <laughs> I'm actually quite a big self-talker and I don't really... To be honest, I don't really share it with anyone because it's just something on the field, off the field. I'm just someone who really just... I feel like I have to talk to myself out loud sometimes. But... I don't like to do it in front of people. So as I said, once again, once I'm going through such situations, um, just whenever I get a chance to be alone, I generally reflect. I talk, oh, why did you do that? Why did you do this? What happened there? I try not to, I've, as I've grown older, I learned to stop blaming myself, but just un accept what has happened and just look at ways I can deal with it. So um, I get hold of, all my videos, whenever I've got my videos, I watch it, the games back. I'll, you know, just um, sit down, go on YouTube or the television, and wherever it might be, just watch the game back. See where I could have done something differently. Um, as I said, once again, for after it's happened, um, I try to just take that time to really digest it and think about it. But then I try to let it, um, I try to let it go. Um, I, I really don't hang on to it. So whatever's happened the week before, for the next day, maybe, I'll really pro um, process it. Um, the coach might want to talk to me or something. Okay, whatever. But then um, after that, I try to not keep it in my head because I don't want to carry it over with me into the next game, which has happened before as well. I've missed a sitter in the last week and that would have ended my that would have ended my drought. Like, how have I missed that? Because that happened as well in Turkey, in this team, you know, um, I should have had a hat trick. I couldn't score. Um, but what ended up happening was that I let it follow me into the next game. So now I've got another easy chance to score. But I'm thinking about how I missed the last one. And I missed again. And it's kind of like, oh, wow, like what's, what's really going on? And you got to really just tell yourself, look, I let it stay in there for the day. I digest it. I get angry at myself. I just go through whatever emotion I need to go through and then I just try to push it away and yeah. 
Steve, does your game change at all in those situations? So let's just say the scenario that you were in there where like, you know, you, you might have missed like one or two yeah. open goal chances. Are you looking for like, I don't know, your bread and butter? Are you, are you looking to, right, if he sticks it at the back post, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my foot on this and that's it. That's a goal. Because I know in my head I can score those sort of goals. Yeah. Yeah. Any sort of change? In those sort of yeah, one hundred percent, and um, it's it, one, it's not always a good thing as well because it does change. Because after the first miss, you kind of say, okay, pick myself up, go again. After the second one, yeah, my, I myself, you tend to sometimes start hiding. You can't help it sometimes, and it's, it's something that we you need to grow out of as well. We need to learn. I had to learn to grow out of. Um, I start trying to look for the easy ones, but then once I've kind of lost that trust in myself, the easy ones start becoming the hard ones as well. So um, I do tend to still look for that um, bread and butter opportunity for myself, but um, I feel like because the confidence is not there anymore, it's, it's, it's very hard to keep that confidence and drive. Mm-hmm. It makes it a bit harder. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was going to speak to Curtis, actually. Um, obviously, he, 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 he was playing in a, um, a different position to you, but I'm sure he had mental pressures playing yeah. football yeah. as well. Um, how did you deal with those uh, sort of situations, Curtis? Were you like a self-talker or what was, what was your go-to? Yeah, so obviously when I was a bit younger, I'd say I kind of I kept myself to myself. You know, I would, I would spend a lot of time sort of going through my game in my head. I would speak to teammates that I had a good relationship with um, on a, like a one-to-one level. Um, yeah, so I think as as I've got older, definitely the the self talk is 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 imperative. Self assessment, you know, I'll make notes now. I will write things down. I will I would have gone over video as well. So um, yeah, everyone deals with everyone deals with the situations differently. I think it's the main thing for a young footballer, a footballer is just wanting to improve, and it's understanding where you you may have gone wrong the first time, not letting it affect you. And then bouncing back from that, you know, we, we can't let these mistakes happen um, on a regular basis. As you say, with strikers, they continue to happen. You, you don't get the place in the team the following week or yeah. a couple of weeks later. So, you know, you have to snap out of these things quickly. Um, yeah, assess where you've gone wrong and, and move forward. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And, and I guess this is kind of like a, a question to, to both of you and even Matt wants to give it a go as well does your training intensity change um but when you're on a drought or when you're playing not so well do you up the ante the reason why i ask this is because i remember ages ago on match of the day um, ian wright speaking about how when he was on a goal drought he would line up balls on the six yard box like about 15 of them and he just like smash them into the roof of there Smash, 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 just to like, just to cycle, yeah. get the yeah. scoring goals yeah. and getting and getting back into it. Is is there anything you guys would do in in training? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I would I definitely do that. I would just spend a lot of time shooting, extra shooting after training, um, just a bit extra fitness work, just little bits here and there, wherever where, um, wherever I can. Um, because I think it definitely helps. Um, as you said about what Ian Wright did there, it's just it's just habits. That's that's a very common one that I'll do as well. Just penalty spot, different um, places in the area, and literally just hit the ball in the net. Mm-hmm. Um, I even used to get sometimes I'll stay there after training doing it. And the key what I had to learn there was just to find that balance because what I learned is that um, it's easy. It's very easy to train well when you're scoring and your confidence. But it's easy to hide when things ain't going your way. And why I say that? Because myself, when um, things are going good for me, you would see me after training. Yeah, coach, I'm going to do some extras. Everyone's there stretching. I'm there with balls shooting. Yeah, scoring top corner, this and that. But when things are not going well, at first I didn't want to do that. Because all I could think is my mind is that, oh, I haven't scored and I'm doing extra. What are they going to be saying about me over there? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I kind of lost my voice a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's very key not to do that because then you're only going to set yourself further back. But what you want to do, obviously, is find ways to pick yourself back up. So I had to learn that balance, block out everything, 
um, do what I need to do. When things are going bad, uh, when things are going good, do it. When things are going bad, do it two times more. Do you know what I mean? So, and that's just the only way that I've learned to really, that's how you're going to pick yourself back up. It's um, about picking that little ground, isn't it? You know, like when things are going well, not getting too high. And, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? When you, run, when you run those droughts, when you're not contributing like you think you should be, it's about not getting too low, you know, because as you see, yeah. well, things change week to week. I mean, like you get three games in a week, you've got another, you play on a Saturday, you can always rectify it come a Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday evening or whatever. So, you know, you just got to get onto the next one, get onto the next one. I think going on from your question, Josh, for me personally, it wasn't my main role in the team wasn't to score goals, but as a fullback, especially a modern day fullback, it was to contribute in other ways like assists and crosses and stuff like that. So I think for me, when I was going on those assist routes, it was setting myself those targets right. I want to get um, seven crosses in this first half and then seven in the second half. And from that, you know, you start to feel yourself contributing to the game um, um, the more and more the game goes on and then those assists and those numbers start to come um, you heard I think you heard James Madison on Sky Sports the other day he heard one of the pundits call out his um, I think it was his goal record and he mm. said he just had it in his head how much he wanted to like, prove that person wrong I don't know if it was Jamie Carragher uh, but he wanted to prove him wrong and since then he's gone on scoring like I don't know, seven in the last day yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I That's think it's important to like. To sorry, guys. I was just saying, like, it's important to like just go back to the basics. Like, what are the basics of that position? So, like, as Cody says, banging in crosses. Sadiq says, banging in balls into the back of the net, basically, and then just drill those basics all over again, and just repeat, yeah. and get that foundation again, and then yeah. know, maybe try more exotic things after. But go straight back to basics and drill, drill, drill. Yeah, just just literally touching on that again, Josh. It's just 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 taking me back to literally that particular moment in my head where I was going through that. In terms of like, I'd put balls and just start hitting them in the net, and if it's not going in the corner, you'd hear some players, you know, because it happens. You hear ah, the keeper would have saved that, or ah, you know, that was a, a was a bad shot. And before, what would stop? me doing these things is because I couldn't be bothered to hear that. So I would rather wait for everyone to go away than stay out on my own when no one's watching me. But then I said to myself, look, Sadiq, if you're going to amount to what, if you're going to get where you want to get and be at the level that you want to get, there's going to be more people than your teammates watching you. You're going to be playing against opponents. You're going to have teammates. You're going to have other coaches. You're going to have fans. So mm -hmm. forget about what they say. Forget about what it looks like and just do what you have to do at the end of the day how many shots do we see where it's kicked straight at the goalkeeper but he spills it or it goes through his legs or mm. now I sir, a goal is a goal yeah if this is the basic that I have to do to get myself back to that level I don't care what he says she says or the next person I'm now mentally in tune to what I need to do and I just get it done touching on what Matt said the basics that could be putting the ball on the six yard with nobody in a goal no defenders and just 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 do what I need to do to feel better in myself and know that I'm doing my work to get back to the top level and mm. that's that yeah. yeah I think um Jimmy Greaves once said I think it was him anyway he says when I take a shot I always aim at the goalkeeper because the chances are I'm not going to get it exactly where I aim it and it'll go a little bit left or a little mm. bit right mm. and he goes at least it's on target and he goes as long as it's on yeah. target that's all that matters and if I am at the keeper, I'm probably going to get it a little bit wrong. And then yeah. it'll go closer towards yeah. the corner. <laughs> yeah, but I think the difference is there, the, the sort of grounds that Jimmy Greaves used to play on were absolute mud baths. So, like, you know... I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get some accuracy on those pitches would have been an absolute nightmare. Just um, keep the ball as a bonus back there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Oh, I would not like to get hit in the face on those brown leather balls. <laughs> um, yeah. um, so, this, obviously, you touched upon a few of the different leagues that you've played in um, yeah. in the past. What would you say was the most difficult league to score in? And do you have like a specific answer why you thought that was the case? Uh... It's, 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 it's a funny one, actually, because I actually had a long think about 
I had a long think about this one. And what I would say, for me, it would probably be my first year as a pro in the Greek second division. And funny enough, up to, th- up to today, I don't think it's the hardest league I've actually played in. But it was definitely the hardest league for me to score in. I managed to score two goals only. And what I would say, why, what, what it broke down to me was that I was young. It was my first year as a pro. And I was still learning a lot and not playing as much as I felt that I should be playing. So I kind of felt like, ah, um, he's only given me 30 minutes, so I don't have to score. It's hard. It's hard to score anyway, and he's not giving me enough time. Or I'm trying to do things based on what I think needs to be done rather than play my own game in a sense as well. So I just think, I think my age and the fact that I was a first year pro there had um, a lot to do with that, um, where we don't really just play to our strengths. When you're, when you're 20, when you're 20, 21, 22, I feel like we don't play enough to our own strengths and we try to follow um, instructions too much. And I felt like, I sometimes I look back to the time and say, you know what, if you actually just played to your strengths more, and did the things that they brought you here to do, it probably won't have been as hard for me to score and I probably would have hit double figures there, 20 minutes or not. So, yeah, that's that's that's, that's my, what I think, yeah, for me. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's so important to play to your strengths. Um, yeah. It's, it's like we were speaking about before, right? These are almost like your go-tos, these are your bread and butters, and these are the... Yeah. Obviously, very, very important when you're going through yeah. a goal drought. Um, so, yeah, completely with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess just to um, start r- r- wrapping this up now, um, what are three things that you would uh, put over to a young player to try and get out of a goal drought? Like they're in a, their own goal drought themselves. What, what three things would you say are ways to help them get out of it from your experience uh this this one for me is it's easy to say it's hard to do but i'll say you got to believe in yourself self-belief you got to keep working hard and again i'll say you got to believe in yourself and why i say that is because it all it all stems from self-belief you know um no matter what situation you're going through you've got to just kind of keep believing in yourself and that it will be better because if you don't believe it then chances are you're not going to do it so that coupled with the hard work and the drive to keep going then the goal drought won't last very long or even if it lasts however long it lasts when you get out of it you're going to fly you're going to fly so um, I think it's very important just those those three things in those order believe in yourself work hard and believe in yourself even more you got that and you're golden yeah. No one, no one's gonna do it for you either. So if you, don't, if you don't believe in yourself, who, who is? You know, I feel like yeah. positivity and energy is such a big thing. You know, what it kind of radiates off you. So you put in that into the into the universe. You put it into your coaches and seeing you with a smile on your face and showing that yeah. you want to work hard at training showing that you're still working in matches and you're not scoring what you, you know, I mean, you're still getting into the right positions. You're still contributing in certain ways. It will, it will yeah. come, it will come to you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that, you know, so. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. I always find that with like team sports, you know, obviously such as football, because the confidence and the self-belief radiates off you. Like it just shows this guy, he wants the ball, get into yeah. a striker. Fire into his feet, zip it in. If it is the right back here, look, he, he's in a really good position. He, he's delivered two or three really good crosses today. Yeah. Another, one, another one. So, yeah, I think self, self-belief in, in, in team sports is, is so key because it's not only you believing in you, it's other people believing in you. And yeah. To yeah. give you that service. I think that will compound yeah, as well. Right? Like the more yeah. you believe in yourself, the more it shows, and then the more of the people will believe in you, and then the more of the people believe in you, the more you believe in yourself again. Yeah. yeah. On top of that, and that sort of stuff will compound, and it will just believe the hype, mate. 
Believe yeah. it. Believe yeah. it. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> yeah. No, sometimes, man, that, as you just said, that 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 belief there. Yeah, I I look back on times myself where I'm just like, you know, when things are not, have not really gone well, and you're kind of like, you lose that belief. So you kind of like, I'm I, I've I've done it myself. I'm kind of in the box. I'm like, yeah, yeah, give me that ball. You know, but I'm not really like confident in what I'm saying. So the teammate kind of looks at me. It's kind of like, I don't know. But on <laughs> other occasions where, in, as I've grown, I'm playing bad. For example, I've missed one, two. But the minute I see myself in that position, yes, give me that ball, and then they give it, and then eventually you're gonna get your moment. But you have to not just voice it; you have to actually believe what you're saying because. Sometimes we can just be loud, but we don't really know what we're doing or what we're saying. Yeah, no. yeah. That's what I like what you say about putting the ball on like the six yard line and smashing it in. Because if yeah. you're in a goal drought and you haven't got any self belief, you might start doubting can you even kick the ball into can the I net? Can I do yes. Exactly. And then to just bang it in, okay, so I can actually kick the ball in the net, can I put it closer to the corner? And that's what will breed that self belief little by yeah. little until yeah. you know it, you bang.